In this video, I'll test play Kid Ridiculous version 0.3 and show off some new stuff. Here's the new intro screen. What do you think? It's actually got the name of the game. Looking pretty good. This is the new area. This is the Kid Icarus level 1-1. Not everything works correctly. <laughs> Looking at the she mums, when they drop, they're supposed to turn to face the player, but they don't actually do that yet. That door will take us to Super Mario Bros. 1-1, but we're going to skip it for now. I'm going to head to the top. I'm going to show off the entire level, and then we're going to start again from the bottom, and then we're going to take a different route. So screen wrap works for everything. I've tested it with all of the different agents. So, except for the mono eyes that you see right now. Those guys will not screen wrap, but on purpose, because if they go off screen, they should not screen wrap around to the other side. It'll screw up their um, the move mechanic. So these guys hover around, and as I scroll up, they won't come down, they'll scroll up with me. That door was a fake door, I don't have anything behind it yet, I don't really have a need to use it. It's nice to be able to transition between these two areas for right now. So check this out. Scream wrap works, uh, there's an empty space, oh, but the blockage on the left side is, how to say, mirrored on the right side, so if you take a look at the map, you'll see a map that looks a little bit silly on the sides, but when you see how screen wrapping is happening here, where solid needs to exist on the other side of the screen when you're transitioning off in order to properly do the collision detection. Anyway, anyway, so we can jump up, jump. In the When I first started playing this game, I would never get these jumps. But now it's pretty easy. By the way, I'm not recording uh, this live. Uh, I've actually recorded this video already. Now I'm just narrating it just to show off what's happening and kind of explain what's happening and test stuff. So, so let's see. Oh yeah, it's solid on the left side as well. In places, but not everywhere. Okay, so yes, I've implemented also, as you can see, the uh, glitch where Pit can fire multiple arrows really quickly uh, by pressing down and uh, releasing down and then firing, pressing down, releasing down, so ducking, unducking, and then firing really quickly. It's a glitch in the game. At first, it wasn't in the code. I actually had to purposely add it. Uh, I'm not sure how it was done in the original code, but it's in this code now. Okay, skip Super Mario Brothers 1-1. We're gonna head up a little bit. One of the doors that we skipped, the one near the Chalice of Health, that has our entrance to Metroid. Uh, I'm not gonna go to Super Mario Brothers 1-1 because Pit, how to say, if he skips getting power-ups for Mario, he can get stuck between pipes. And since the screen does not scroll to the left anymore, it's impossible for him to move. It's like endgame. So we're gonna skip that. We're gonna try Metroid. Metroid. 1-1 in quotes. Yep. <laughs> One hit, two hit, explode. Too short. Pit is too short. And also does not double jump. But really easy to get into those tight spaces slide. He can choose to go backwards and forward sliding, so that's nice. Alright, Samus. So Samus is better equipped for this kind of environment, obviously, but it's nice to know that uh, characters from other environments can traverse at least parts of the wrong environments. Okay. The door mechanic works, except the screen transition doesn't work properly. Some polish to be added later. Also, as you can see, when Samus is rolling on the ground, the sprite doesn't bounce up and down, or 
I guess you'd say wobble up and down, like in the real game. I'm not showing you, but if you play the game yourself, you'll see that you can take that Rio uh, out of bounds. It will go out the door with you. I like that. Try and farm some health. No luck, so just exit. Back to Kid Icarus 1-1 one -one with Samus. Uh, Samus has only three health, now only two health, getting kind of low, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get to Super Mario Brothers, and we'll take a power-up somewhere. Soft bump, soft bump, hard bump, soft bump. Mario gets the power-up not. One thousand, not one up. But Mario can get bigger. Mario does not freeze the screen while he gets bigger because I intend this to eventually become multiplayer. In a multiplayer environment, if you freeze the screen for one, you have to freeze the screen for all. I don't want to have to get into the mechanics of that, uh, so I'm just going to skip it for now. Again, some polish. set of abilities. Fireballs go through the flagpole. They should not. Countdown should happen. It does not. Yet. Polish again. It's very difficult for Mario to get into that tight space because of his uh, body size. But he can. <laughs> and he can run. And almost get hit. <laughs> just make it up. Alright, so Mario can work inside Metroid World. What happens if Mario has to go up against Mother Brain? I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe with star power or with multiplayer friends helping Mario along so they can all get through Mother Brain together. Again, I should have taken the Rio through the door, but I didn't. When you play it, you can do it yourself. Ah, Samus has uh, the best mechanics for Kid Icarus 1-1. She doesn't take much damage from the, the enemies right now. That's kind of nice. That has to be fixed. Uh, the damage and health values for all the players and all the enemies are just in a kind of a quasi-working state. They should be uh, standardized. And right now, it's enough to demonstrate that, that things can move around on the screen, things can give power-ups, uh, players can, can uh, say die. Uh, I'm not going to show it, but uh, as the screen scrolls up, it's also scrolling up a kill box. So if Samus were to fall off the screen uh, into the blackness, uh, she would be despawned with the sound and the uh, Samus chunks going flying everywhere. Samus, again, is just wonderful for this level. She makes short work of those mono eye. <laughs> uh, right now, with those platforms you cannot fall down through. You can jump up through them, but if you duck on the platform, they do not properly kick the player downward. That's okay. Alright, going all the way to the top. I want to see what happens when Samus makes it all the way to the top. And can you make it over these jumps? Ooh! The only reason I'm doing this in like one go is because I played this through so many times trying to debug it. Believe me, getting those jumps correct is like 1 in 100. Usually, I fall down. Usually, I'd be restarting the game at this point. So, it's possible to screen wrap infinitely. Technically, a shot, if it never uh, dies from, like, timeout, a shot could transition forever from left to right or right to left. Uh, that would be kind of silly.
So Samus has now traversed the entire Kid Icarus 1-1. She's jumped up to where, as a kid, I would always say, what the heck is up there? And I'd never be able to find it because all I had was the original NES game, which was fantastic, by the way. And I couldn't get Kid Icarus up there. Believe me, I tried. I spent maybe half an hour trying to figure out, how can I, oops. Okay, so, <sighs> everything is buggy. Windows is buggy, this is buggy. Everything is bugs. But the nice thing about this is you can look at the code. And if someone knows what they're looking at, they'll spot the huge number of bugs that are still left in the code. Believe me, it's easy. Fix that should have been greater than or equal to to mirror what's happening with the X check to make sure that when a tile's checked for existence, it's not a tile that's off the map. Anyway, now that that's fixed, let's test it out. I'm going to take a bit of a circuitous route, and I'm going to show the debug lines. The debug lines may not show up too well in the video. On my screen, they look really nice and clear. Uh, what you're seeing is not just the collision geometry. If you look at the floors, you'll see the green lines around them. Those are the solid lines. So the players cannot move through them if they have a solid bit set on their uh, collision. But if you look closely, you see some of those things traveling underneath the monowai. Those are player detectors. So when one of those boxes comes in contact with the player box, now the monowai is able to, how to say, get a reference to the player. And now the monowai can check, where is the player on the screen? Is the player facing the Monowai? If the player is facing the Monowai, well, the Monowai is traveling down, then the Monowai will target the player. It's as simple as that. The Monowai, otherwise, will travel back and forth, back and forth, until they notice that the player is staring at them. Why? Why would a giant eye care if the player is staring at them? Hmm, that's a funny question. Ask Nintendo. More player detectors so that as Samus travels underneath these baddies, they'll come down and try and get her. But they're not good enough. Yep. Rio, again, did not take it through the door, had so many opportunities, so wasted every single one. Alright, now to test out our fix. So when Samus went up to the top of this level before, she jumped up, out of the level, went out of bounds, and caused a null pointer exception. Hopefully, it's solved. Well, I know it's solved. I made the video, and then I narrated it, so... Duh. At this point, I thought my health was really low. I forgot that these guys did only one damage, so I was really tricky about trying to get around them. That's why you saw me do that tricky jump between them. At this point, I realized, uh, okay, I don't need to worry about my health anymore. But I still want to knock these guys out of the air before they hit me. Because they will knock me to the side if they hit me. The uh, in, oh, there we go. Accidentally picked up a heart. Okay, so picking up a power-up, an out-of-character power-up, will cause character transition. So Samus became Pit. Ooh, we've got more than the normal number of eyes on screen. Oh, back to three. Anyway, there were six. Uh, so get some health. And finish that up. Still going. So if you watch really closely... Ah, so... The mono eye was traveling downwards while the player was in the box that the mono eye has for detecting players, and the mono eye was looking at the player while the player was looking at the mono eye. Uh, it's how to say, I don't know who thinks of this stuff, and I didn't even think of it until I had to code it, and I thought, oh, oh, that makes sense. Uh, oh yeah, checking out the collision detection. Just showing that arrows will pass screen wrap from right to left, but if there's some sort of a, uh, what do you call it? A, a collision tile on the left side, it will strike the tile before it screen wraps. So, so anyway, at this point, we're going to switch over to Samus and see if the error is there. Okay, again, yep. 
Okay, at that point, the error would have triggered a null pointer. So it works. So at this point, I realize I'm at the top of a game that I used to play as a kid, and when I was a kid, I would never get up here. I think there was a red enemy that used to spawn up here and sometimes come down. And I was like, well, if it spawns up there, I can go up there, right? I just have to find a secret code. <sighs> Turns out there was no secret code, except the source code. Oh, that's kind of funny. Anyway. So at this point, I'm just going to keep playing for a little bit, uh, show off a bit more of the uh, debug lines. Those are the lines you're seeing on screen that look a little out of place. As you can see, Samus is a little thin uh, on her head. She has a little box to detect when she's hitting a bump tile on her bottom. She has a small box to detect when she's on ground. And also, that on ground detected will detect pipe warps. So if she's on ground and press down on a pipe warp, within, within the window in which someone can travel down a pipe, uh, then she will trigger the pipe warp script and be sent downwards. She can do everything Mario would do, jumping on turtles. The turtles take on the characteristics like being able to jump on their heads. That's a characteristic of the turtle. That's not a characteristic of Mario. Mario jumps on the head, which makes the turtle do a head bounce. So the head bounce attached to the turtle, not to the Mario. All right, so at this point, I've finished it. I'm done showing it off. If you want to play the game, go download it. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more of this stuff, uh, subscribe and you'll see when more of it comes out. Thank you.